the impact of parents' mindset on raising a child with Down syndrome as your child grows, they will become one of your most profound mentors. Children with Down syndrome seem akin to wise sages. They possess an inspiring ability to live in the present moment, a quality deserving of admiration. Yet, this focus on the present might hinder the development of mastery motivation. This intrinsic drive propels children to explore and understand their surroundings through hands-on experiences, serving as a crucial catalyst for growth from an early age. Nonetheless, studies indicate that children with Down syndrome may exhibit reduced levels of mastery motivation, potentially impacting their perseverance when faced with challenging tasks. And let's face it, most tasks are more challenging for a child with Down syndrome. The good news is that by supporting your child, they can learn to develop intrinsic motivation, including mastery motivation. Your child will rely on you to express pride in them, demonstrate belief in their capabilities, and provide encouragement to persist. By offering these elements to your child, you can provide the external drive needed for their success. Utilizing extrinsic motivation or rewards can be beneficial for children with Down syndrome. Consider providing rewards based on activities such as high fives, hugs, bubbles, spending time with a loved one or a beloved toy or game coupled with positive reinforcement. Your child's learning success greatly hinges on your mindset, making it one of the most influential factors. Children with Down syndrome possess a remarkable sensitivity to the emotions, body language, and expectations of those around them. As their parents, your emotions, body language, and expectations will be the most important to them. As you strive to provide the support your child requires, do not be afraid of your own disappointment if they fall short of a goal. Having spent more than 12 years collaborating closely with families, I realized that certain parents, gripped by fear of their own letdowns, shield themselves by setting modest expectations and goals. This is not only harmful to the child's development, but also sends a message that they are not capable of achieving more. Instead, embrace your child's potential and celebrate their progress, no matter how small. Do not make up excuse after excuse for why they cannot do something. I understand how much your baby means to you. However, making excuses won't give them the support they require. While they might feel tired, scared, or under the weather at times, and you should address their needs without delay. However, it's important to help your child learn how to push through those challenges and grow stronger. As a parent, it can be difficult to see your child struggle or fall short of their goals. However, it is important to remember that your emotions, body language, and expectations will greatly impact how your child perceives their own abilities. When providing support for your child, try not to let any disappointment you may feel overshadow the progress they have made. Instead, focus on the effort they put in and celebrate small victories along the way. It is also important not to set low expectations or goals for your child out of fear of disappointment. While it may seem like a protective measure, it can ultimately hinder their growth and development. Your child needs challenges in order to reach their full potential. Do not show pity for them. Pity is the feeling of sorrow and compassion caused by the suffering and misfortunes of others. While it may be natural to feel pity for your child when they are struggling, it is important not to show it outwardly. Showing pity can make your child feel like they are not capable or that their efforts are not good enough. Instead, offer encouragement and support without making them feel sorry for themselves. Do be mindful of your body language. Some research says that nonverbal communication is up to 93% of communication. Your child can pick up on your body language even if you think you are hiding it well. If you show signs of disappointment or frustration, it can impact their confidence and self-esteem. Instead, maintain a positive and encouraging demeanor, regardless of how difficult the task may seem. Having delved into books and attended classes on body language, I find it a captivating and enriching topic. I believe it has enhanced my communication skills, both within and beyond the classroom setting. It might be something for you to explore, too. After pinpointing what to avoid and what to embrace, let's explore putting it into practice. It's crucial to note that children with Down syndrome thrive on praise. However, the way in which you praise them should be tailored to each child. While some may shy away from high-pitched, exuberant praise, others may love it. These kids tend to be the little ones who love the limelight. 
Some may appreciate a simple nice job accompanied by a smile. These kids are the ones who may not like the limelight. Some children prefer a more laid-back approach and respond best to cool gestures like a fist bump, especially those with older siblings. As you can see, it is important to be watching your child's body language as well. Try presenting praise in different ways to see which one your child responds to best. Remember, their style might not be the same as yours. An important part of extrinsic motivation can be rewards and motivators. Let's first talk about what makes them different and why one or the other is used in different situations. Rewards are given when your child has done something well. Your child turns on their voice. You smile and talk back. This is a reward. In my work with children one year to five years, I use rewards way more than I do motivators. If your child is in this age range, I recommend that you almost only reward. When it comes to our young ones, I prefer keeping rewards brief, usually under 30 seconds, with most lasting around five seconds. More elaborate rewards, such as a complete song or dance party, are reserved for significant efforts due to their longer duration. I enjoy varying rewards to keep things interesting and prevent monotony. I refrain from asking for their preference, as I understand that making choices can be challenging at this young age. Developing the skill of decision-making is a process that we guide through direct instruction. Promptly rewarding a behavior or achievement is crucial. I carry bubbles and other rewards in my pocket for quick reinforcement. A motivator is something that encourages someone to achieve goals or behavior. This is not a bribe. For example, the promise of a fish cracker to complete a task or perform a skill or behavior. This becomes a more useful tool as the child becomes older. Many teachers find a first this, then that chart useful. They go something like this. First I do my math, then I get a fish cracker. Often a child will have a bank of motivators to choose from for each time they perform a difficult task. What are some ideas for rewards and motivators? Bubbles, high fives, hugs, way to go. Music, dance party, ringing a bell, mini chocolate chip, baby fish cracker, light up toy, wind up toy, stickers, and conclusion. Your mindset is an important part of motivating your child. By using positive reinforcement and rewards, you can encourage good behavior and help them develop a growth mindset. Remember to be patient, consistent, and creative in your approach to motivating your child, and most importantly, have fun with it. Watching your child grow and develop is its own reward.